I am one of the staunchest followers of Ayurveda possible and I think uh, the belief has come from my own uh, journey to cure my own disease. Uh, I am suffering from rheumatoid arthritis. I have a very hard illness and then Dr. Krumpas, my doctor, brought me here to the Ayurveda. I had water in my feet, thick water, and, um, and pains all over. I've been uh, trying these Ayurvedic treatments for the last three years now. Um, ever since I had an attack of a pancreas infection actually about three years ago. Before I came to this institution, I knew a little bit about Ayurveda. Um, basically because I, I have a skin issue, so it's something it's called psoriasis, similar to eczema. And recently I had a stroke with the weakness to my right hand. Um, the allopathic treatment come to an end where they could not give me any more. When I had a labrum tear, when everybody said I need to do a surgery, I'll be off cricket for six to seven months. I came here uh, and I missed the test series in Australia and I had to take a decision between a surgery or come back to Ayurvedic. And when I began, from the first moment on, Everything goes to be better. My, I found my soul, the water out, out, uh, out of my feet went out, the pains left me, and so I came back to the normality and I can handle everything very good. I could move my fingers, I could do my own work. In about three treatments, which is about three years, I was 95% fit. She came to us with very severe uh, pain in both knees actually and now I'm seeing her already six months um, after the end of the active uh, uh, trial treatment and she's symptom free regarding her knees. So, you know, this is not me or my team, it's Ayurveda that is working and it's fantastically working. But then now I'm finding a little bit more belief in it because it's true, because it's a very uh, organic way of reacting with your body. Like, I mean, people have had the system for years and years put together, they're not fools, right? So it is not that uh, you expect them to uh, give you things which are about 5,000 years old. They give you things which are 5,000 years old along with the 21st century. Ayurveda is the science of 21st century. Ayurveda is actually futuristic medicine. Ayurveda is not a medicine of past at all. In my opinion, everything starts from the mind, in any case, you know. <laughs> So, uh, we, we, we cannot ignore it and I would say 20% of diseases should be treated by modern medicine and the remaining by Ayurveda and all the 100 other systems that also exist. The allopathic medicine and this ancient medicine combined, combinedly, I think, can be immense benefit to humanity. Puryun santam de zotam pato voar. Puryun santam de zotam pato vivr. Puryun santam de zotam pato savoar. Puryun santam de zotam pato augmente. Puryun santam de zotam pato avonsi. Puryun santam de zotam pato etr. Puryun santam de zotam pato devenio. Puryun santam de zotam pato deveni. La Rig Veda sa compose de trois aspects connus comme le tri sutra de Ayurveda. Dans le Veda 12e et 3e, le Sam Veda et Jajur Veda, chante de mantra et la performance de rituel étaient respectivement traités. Dans le 4e Veda, Athar Veda, Ayurveda est un Upaveda ou subsection.
To understand this, you need to realize that the Vedas actually represent a psychological process of the human mind. The, the first three Vedas, the Rik, Yajus and the Sama, represent three powers of the human mind. That is, the power of knowledge, the power of action and the power of will. So they are together known as the Trai. Now, Atharva Veda is the fourth Veda. It is the Veda of compensation, of rectification, of correction. When the harmony between your knowledge, the action and the will is disturbed, you have to forcefully bring it back into harmony. The fourth Veda or the Atharva Veda therefore represents that, you know, re-establishment of the harmony. In a similar way, from the ritualistic portions of the Atharva Veda, the more empirical, rational, intellectual expression of Ayurveda emerged. This is very specifically mentioned in one of the Ayurvedic texts called Kashyapa Samhita, which says, such a prak Atharva Veda Upanishadsu prag utpanna, that it first originated in the Upanishadic portion of the Atharva Veda. Toute la littérature ayurvédique est basée sur la philosophie appelée Samkhya, ce qui signifie savoir la vérité. Le Rishi Kapila a découvert 24 principes ou éléments de l'univers. Prakruti, l'énergie féminine, crée toutes les formes de l'univers. Tandis que Purusha, l'énergie masculine, est le témoin de cette création. Purusha, l'énergie masculine, représente la consciente endormie. Prakruti est l'énergie féminine créatrice. Dans l'état transcendental, ils sont en harmonie, les uns avec les autres. Prakruti prend le rôle principal de manifester que les tanmatras ou cinq sens. L'essence de la vie. Les panchatras, les cinq éléments manifestés, tels que l'être, Air, feu, e, et terre. Et les panch mahabhutas, les cinq éléments subtils inhérites au cours des cinq éléments manifestés. Lorsque la création a lieu, le premier développé à se manifester est Mahad, la grande esprit. Cette Mahad a quatre composantes Amkar, l'ego, Chitta, le souvenir, Buddhi, la logique et l'intelligence, Manaz, la compétence de refléter. Ce spectre entier de la création est régi par le Trigunaz, qui représente la nature inhérite de Tamaz, Rajaz et Sattva. Le Trigunaz contrôle le comportement des corps, l'esprit, l'émotion et l'esprit aussi. Au centre de la science de la guérison est la doctrine de Tridosha, l'énergie vitale de Veta, Pitta et Kapha. Beautiful aspects of Ayurveda is its Tridosha Siddhanta or the Tridosha principle based on which everything in Ayurveda works. We say in Ayurveda that a Vaidya should be Dosha Yegadrik. You should see Doshas in everything, in human being, in the, in the plants kingdom, in the thing which are immovable, everything a Vaidya should see, start seeing doshas. And Vada, Pitta and Kabha, the three doshas which govern the entire universe according to Ayurveda. And what is this three doshas? Three doshas are nothing but a recombination in biological system by the different elements which we call as Panjamaha Buddhas. Dharma, Artha, Kama, Mokshanam, Arogyam, Mula Muttamam, Roga, Tasya, Abhartara, Shreya, Sojiva, Sija. This is the ultimate objective of Ayurveda. 
I always say that body is important, but body is not the only thing that is important. Body is important because body is the seat for your mind, and mind and body together become a seat for your consciousness. If you want to improve your consciousness, which is translated into Atma in our time, Atma needs a good, sound seating place. That is the body and mind. Otur the cans meal avo jese Ayurveda ayate dilimite on those ekol distinct. Atreya lekol the medicine. E dhanvantri lekol the shirurgy. Charaka kete le medicine du kur physician du rua celebre kanishka sivi de lekol atreya de medicine. Shushurta e celebre kam le pair de la shirurgy. En effet, ces deux ouvrages de pensée conduisent à la rédaction de deux ouvrages importants sur l'Ayurveda, Charaka Samhita et Shushruta Samhita. Ayurveda Amrudanam, this is the rhyme from Veda, which means that Ayurveda is nothing but for longevity. And Charaka says Ayurveda has no starting, no ending. It is Anadhan and Anadi, which means the knowledge of Ayurveda has been remaining in the universe all the time to come. In that way, the Ayurveda came into literary existence through some hithas like Charaga, Sushruta and Vagpada some 3000 years back. The today's Charaga Samhita, which we consider as our basis of Ayurvedic knowledge, is actually a culmination of knowledge generated by Atreya, Punarvasu, then by Agnivesha and others. Senior Dhanventri, la sage directeur de la médecine ayurvédique, est dit être un avatar de Vishnu. Il y a quatre grandes Dhanventri temples en Kerala, dont Neluea dans le quartier Trissur est le plus important. It is believed that this idol installed here is uh, placed here by uh, Swini Devas. And the Lord Dhanandiri, it is believed that in his one hand he holds leech and another hand the pot of nectar. So it is a symbol of surgery. And it is Koramba, that is the pot of nectar, uh, that is a symbol of medicine. Every Dhanandiri temple there will be some doctors. And these are medical students, when they complete their courses, they will come here and take uh, bhajan here for one week, 21 days, etc. And you know that uh, some offerings in this here. One uh, offering is Mukdi Nivedyam. It is a um, medicine. This is uh, we call decoction and kashaya. That you have to take for all stomach disorders. What is unique about India is that India has one of the richest biodiversities. Also an equally rich knowledge of how to use this biodiversity for preserving and promoting human health. This combination is what makes India very unique. And here we find the medical knowledge actually we can find it in all stages of evolution. Right from tribal medicine to folklore medicine to village medicine to the more learned or sophisticated codified traditions what we call as classical Ayurveda. This is very interesting because the ancient uh, propounders of Ayurveda very, were very humble and they said that we have to learn from nature. You know the first lessons in healthcare are learnt by observing animals. You can find the Adharva Veda saying that the, the medicines that the mongoose knows, the medicines that the eagle knows, let that come to me for help. So from observing animal life to, you know, tribal uh, situations, 
how tribal uh, healers you know how they discover medicine everything was accounted what the classical stream did was to continuously refine modify and validate these healthcare practices and there what was validated became the classical stream and what remained in the people became the folk stream Entre le 13e et 17e siècle, un milieu fertile intellectuel développé autour du temple du Kerala, la culture Ashtavedya a évolué dans cet environnement. Le mélange de Ayurveda de Ashtangvedyam avec les connaissances et les pratiques des guérisseurs locaux. Selon la tradition initialement, 18 familles de castes supérieures du Kerala ont été distinguées comme Ashtavedyal, qui sont maîtres de huit branches de Ayurveda mentionnées dans les textes classiques. In the state of Kerala, Ayurveda was existing in a very specialized way. There were specialist pediatricians, specialist surgeons, and then we had also the Vishavaidyas who were specialized in, you know, snake poison healing. So this person was uh, bitten by a snake. Uh, even today, in modern uh, toxicology, it's quite a challenge to, you know, decide what type of snake has bitten. Even if it's a poisonous snake, the real challenge is to find out whether envenomation has happened. They have a linctus, which is actually a kind of paste made of various herbs, and they apply it on a beetle leaf and ask the patient to chew it. Like if it is sweet taste, then they say that it is great. If it is cobra, the patient will feel a pungent taste, and if it is viper, the patient will feel a sore taste. The earlier medicine was an art, and an, an art means that, and science was a very important tool of this art, right? And since we are following science, we make it very mechanized and rules and controllable. How can you control art? An artist has his own creativity and this and that, you know. So in science we deal with diseases which is deadly in art we deal with life which is healthy Dans l'Ayurveda le concept de diagnostic implique le surveillance du moment à moment de interaction entre l'ordre et la santé et la désordre ou la maladie dans le corps Darshana sparshana prashnai that person darshanam is looking at a patient with the eye of ayurveda not merely looking at and sparshanam is touching the body and understand the texture tonicity all those thing is sparshanam prashnam is interpreting that understanding by asking questions which is leading to that person so that we can get explanation of each of this condition malgré l'absence du soutien pendant la domination britannique De nombreux collèges d'enseignement ayurvédique ont été établis en Inde. L'un de ces collèges du début était le collège d'Ayurveda de Banaras Hindu University, créé par Madan Mohan Malviya en 1927 à Varanasi, qui était aussi le lieu de naissance de Shushruta, père de la chirurgie. Son traité, les Shushruta Samhita, discuté dans les moindres détails de la façon d'effectuer la chirurgie prothétique de remplacer des membres, la chirurgie esthétique du nez et des autres parties du corps. Practice of surgery during Shushruta's period was it in speak. In rhinoplasty, the same technique even today is used as a forehead flap for the construction of dames nose. the skin flap is taken from the forehead the forehead flap is marked which is in black this skin flap is rotated over the nose and the reconstruction is done to create a new nose in case of a damaged nose shushruta detai environ 125 instrument chirurgico utilize par lui la plupart crié en pierre bois et zo d'autres matériaux naturels Les deux autres de instruments à savoir le contondo ou yantra et le trezondo le sastra. Ever since the inception of this uh, institution and uh, what we are trying to establish is uh, that Ayurveda has a viable model of mental health. Sankhyas believe that uh, 
people cannot apprehend uh, the true nature of the things so for example to say in the most simplest simplistic way uh, if i see a person i see my version of the person the concept of mind the concept of behavior and concept of personality concept of emotions these are all based on tridoshas tridosha is the fundamental biological units of body and mind if you um, want to treat this you have to use pharmacological agents to counter this uh, imbalance in the tridoshas and i worked with patients of parkinson's disease uh, it was a it was a an experience with an very steep learning curve because i interacted with neurologists with basic neuroscientists uh, as also with vaidyas and i used an intervention of uh, panchakarma called basti and it was it was very interesting to find uh, that aspects that are not addressed by modern medicine in patients of parkinson's disease are are helped and benefited by ayurvedic interventions for example non motor symptoms of sleep dysfunction of constipation of smell of speech of anxiety it initiated yet another step of how are we really going to marry these two systems for the benefit of the patient in diverse disease conditions all these diseases are originated because of the body's imbalance diurna says how it can correct the body's imbalances by two methods one is the pacification method samana chigilsa second one is the purification method the purificatory method is shodhana chigilsa the famous pancha karma which we do in almost all good authentic ayurvedic hospitals dans les médecins ayurvédiques la pratique de pancha karma est un moyen thérapeutique de éliminer les aliments toxiques de l'organisme Pendant le massage avec le main chaude avec l'huile végétale du corps est détoxifié par le peau. Dans l'Ayurveda, ce traitement à l'huile est appelé snehana. L'utilisation de Savedana se traduira par la passion sortie en sueur. Le rythme du traitement ainsi que l'application de l'huile médicale et ghee est particulièrement adapté à la construction de chaque individu. Un traitement réussi panchakarma aide à éliminer les toxiques accumulés du corps. Et le yoga amène l'homme à l'état naturel de tranquillité qui est équilibre. Ayurveda complements yoga and yoga complements Ayurveda. Ayurveda gives more importance to physical purification and the seat of mind whereas yoga directly interacts with the mind and its action in the body. We say in yoga chale vade chalam chittam nischale nischalam bhave. If the mind is in tranquility the vada principle in the body will be also in balance. Ayurveda et le yoga sont sœurs de science. Le père du yoga Patanjali décrit le huit membres du yoga et des pratiques yogétiques. Ce sont les régulations naturelles du système nerveux, la discipline, le notiage, les postures. la concentration la contemplation la ville de la conscience et l'état de équilibre parfait ayurveda and the kaltip the yoga est adapté à chaque personne selon sa constitution particulière.
most of the modern illnesses because modern medicine has eliminated many of the infectious diseases the overall you know living conditions have improved but these diseases what we call as the lifestyle disorders are really going to be the problem of the future you know in the long run diabetes creates a lot of complications i mean when you look at diabetes it's not just the high blood sugar that you have to control by popping a pill i mean diabetes is the precursor for so many serious conditions like diabetes retinopathy cardiovascular disease kidney damage nerve damage as they call as diabetic neuropathy and one of the strong areas of ayurveda is you know uh, interventions that can prevent diabetes from going into these complications all of a sudden we wake up in the morning and we discover that something is wrong we go to doctor and we notice that after checking blood our blood sugar is high and we are labeled as diabetes but this doesn't happen overnight it is a sequential process modern science or modern medicine we have no clue how it happens in a sequential manner ayurveda tells us that there are six stages called shat kriya kal these six stages tell us that how this is progresses from first stage to next stage to next stage to finally getting expressed as a disease like in diabetes first the imbalance happens say in one dosha okay the then this this dosha will accumulate that's stage 1 after that it sort of gets into a state of agitation that's stage 2 stage 3 is that it spreads into the body stage 4 it goes into a vulnerable area up to this point ayurved can actually reverse everything because stage 5 is the manifestation of disease stage 6 is a manifestation of complications so an ayurvedic physician when he is looking at you he is actually being able to recognize you at each stage so that the disease can actually be reversed the cause can actually be taken away shuklastavaste janmado visheshana eva vishakramehi taishta tisra prakrutayo hina matyotama pradak this is what vagbada says about prakriti and this prakriti is actually the most modern concept of modern science this talks about this genotypes phenotypes etc and even today there are talk there are talks about medicine dosage form suiting to the personality type they say that pharmacogenomics pharmacogenomics nothing but pharmacy or medicine which suit the particular genotypic or phenotypic person pharmacogenomics actually understands that different people have different genetic makeup and therefore they will need different kinds of treatments now but modern medicine and modern science have no clue how to stratify or how to uh, classify people into different categories so that a different set of people can get different medicines everything in medicine is expensive including the doctor who you see the consultation and the doctor then you know puts himself in a very fancy clinic and a fancy hospital which is also expensive so he has to take care of those expenses then the machines are expensive the medicines are horribly expensive uh, you know all the multinationals that are putting drugs in actually the actual cost of medicine is very small you know but the duties and everything that they bring it up to a large level because they have to take care of their research costs you know contemporary ayurveda consists of proprietary ayurvedic formulations that are validated by modern science in early 30s there was no medicine that brought down blood pressure there was no anti hypertensive medicine the only way to bring down blood pressure was to drain blood so the first anti hypertensive product given to the world was given by the founder of himalaya drug company it was made from the root of a plant called rovulfia serpentina subsequently seba extracted the active principle or the chemical that was responsible for bringing down blood pressure and that chemical was called rezepine modern medicine is based on three things either we use poison to poison the bacteria or the cells or we use surgery to cut out things or we use radiation to to radiate the tissue right now they are effective most of the time but they are very invasive and they are very expensive so though that is the good and bad of modern medicine if we take ayurveda the way it has been known or the all the herbal medicines and there are people in government institutions and privately who have actually done the pharmacopoeia on herbal medicine that we apply modern scientific techniques to mod, to herbal medicine and try to make an amalgam between the two not only as complementary but as a fusion that i think that there is room to fuse modern medicine and herbal medicine uh, 
to achieve two things one that your therapies will be equally good or more or more effective two they will be imminently more human friendly so that you don't have to cut out the body or you don't have to use x-ray and all that and third it would be half the price Comme nous progressons à travers ce 20e siècle, on peut vraiment dire que la médecine ayurvédique a pris une dimension mondiale. Ce site a un trait international et respecte comme un autre moyen de prendre soin et santé physique et mentale. I've had a long experience of uh, allopathic medicine in uh, and i have seen the limits of uh, of, our, of our treatments especially in a normal uh, in let's say in a general practitioner practice because you can see that many diseases are due to the fact that people really don't take care of their bodies and their minds so i was very lucky to be able to follow to inscribe in rule in a very good school in milan which is a four year program an introduction to medi- um, ayurvedic medicine and we do our internship here in uh, kerala in trishur which is all, every year a very interesting and profound uh, experience we are here also because uh, the technique is nothing without the real knowledge the real knowledge is uh, connected with uh, the cognitive uh, process and the way people think and since our body as ayurveda teach is not a system of organs but is a system of relationship we come here to modify our, our, our way of thinking and in such a way that we can deeply understand ayurveda so we, what we are trying to do is uh, to reach the deepest meaning of ayurveda in such a way that we are able to bring it back to our country and to find the root of ayurveda in our country because as i said ayurveda is universal is not local aujourd'hui un des plus anciens et en pratique continuous dans le monde des systèmes médicaux et à la recherche de sa place dans le monde moderne La modélisation de l'Ayurveda, cependant, n'est pas uniquement parce que les manquements perçus de médecine occidentale et les effets nafastes de la pharmacothérapie, c'est plutôt un résultat de l'évolution de structure sociale. Il y a une tendance de voir pour les systèmes médicaux près de la nature, en forme plus humaine de médecine. Dans les pays comme les États-Unis, Allemagne, France et le Royaume-Uni, l'Ayurveda est pratiqué par les médecins. Dans les médecins occidentales, l'Ayurveda est considéré comme un système de médecins complémentaire et alternatif. Germany is dominated by modern western medicine, what we call allopathy in India. So any alternative therapy in Germany has problems to establish itself to get well known. Um we do it we are but I mean one of the first things is that all of us all the doctors working here have to be western what in India we call MBBS doctors they have to be western medical doctors because otherwise in Germany you don't get a license to practice you're just not allowed to practice on patients the Ayurveda clinic uh, Kassel is a clinical hospital department in Germany where we can practice ayurvedic medicine One of the unique features of this department is that we are part of a hospital of a larger German hospital. The whole hospital has about 350 beds. Out of these 350 beds, the Ayurvedic department has a ward of 30 beds. It has a large therapy section where oil and sweating therapies are done. And in addition the third one is the Ayurvedic department has its own kitchen and its own dining hall which is separate from the hospital dining hall. food is very important how they should adapt their food how they should use their food and it's not that the food has to be indian necessarily everything that grows in germany and is part of the german food can be used but it has to be used in context in context of the patient in context of the disease in context of the season i see why our medical doctors are coming to our training they're coming because they have lost their dharma as you say 
You know, they once studied medicine because they wanted to do something for humanity. Then they ended up in a technical medicine. Now they're coming to our trainings in Ayurvedic medicine because they're finding back their, you know, back to their own profession and they're finding back to their own mission in life they want to share. And same with the patients. The patients in the moment coming to Ayurveda, they need to have a doctor having time to really understand their problems. Ayurveda in Germany is mostly known as a wellness system and uh, people don't know it's a medical system and what I feel is a big problem it's not accepted by the government as a medical system so it's not covered by the health insurance and German patients are used to having everything covered by health insurance so they're not used to paying for medical care and that is actually one of the main problems in Ayurveda I would say because actually it's not expensive but people are not used to pay for their health. The first insurance company in Germany just recently had a discussion with me how to you know, build up a framework to implement uh, Ayurveda in their portfolio. Uh, the European Society for Quality in Healthcare just recently opened a department for Ayurveda and complementary medicine. Then the universities are now taking up also research and when you see all that then you can be assured that Ayurveda has a great future in our countries. La réussite dans l'utilisation de Ayurveda dans l'Occident provient dans une large mesure de la capacité à accueillir le modèle occidental allopathique. Avec l'Ayurveda travaillé au côté allopathique dans de nombreux hôpitaux. Germany is not the same as India, or Europe is not the same as India. We have a different climate, we have different nutrition uh, habits, we have some different genes. So what's also uh, of interest, of, of much interest, is we have to adapt a little bit to the European or to the American conditions. Perhaps not everything is the same, uh, perhaps an, a, a treatment that works in Mumbai or in Delhi very well will happen to, to, to be adapted a little bit in Berlin or in New York City. We started now with the, um, within the frame of our cooperation, also with the Indian government, which we are, about which we are very thankful. Um, we started to treat patients now. We are sure that we will have some uh, good results and then we will start to implement it into the European health care system. What we see today uh, in Western countries and also globally is a trend towards um, integration, towards integrative medicine. And um, for our understanding um, in the universitarian setup, that does not mean, um, you know, a sort of random integration of therapeutic elements, but it means the integration um, of uh, the best possible therapeutic tools for our individual patients out of the mixture of different therapeutic modes. I have a patient here in the hospital um, who comes with a certain disease, a certain health problem, a certain health condition, that we take elements from different systems of medicine. Suppose we have a patient who comes in with rheumatoid arthritis or osteoarthritis of the knee, so joint and bone disorders, and um, asks us for help or for our uh, medical advice, this patient will of course also receive Ayurvedic treatment, Abhyanga, Swedana, maybe some um, Ayurvedic herbal treatments. And we will also um, take uh, advice from our yoga specialists who will, who will then come and see which joints are affected and he will give us advice on certain yoga sanas which might be beneficial. 
Ayurveda pour travailler à remplacer ou à compléter des autres systèmes de médecine, de contrer les effets néfastes de médecine controversielle et accélérer la phase de récupération. I'm a gynecologist and an obstetrician, so I tried to find holistic concepts for the treatment in gynecology and um, obstetrics. We deal with a pregnant women like with patients, and th this is wrong. But we can help them to um, have a good pregnancy, to have a good time, using also these techniques of uh, natural herbs, of um, meditation, of yoga during pregnancies. Also we start to teach the mothers uh, to apply Ayurvedic massage uh, to their newborn babies every day. This moment they start with the massage, the babies are very quiet, very relaxed and this is, a, I think, a very important and a pleasant atmosphere. Ayurveda est une forme holistique de la médecine. Elle ressemble beaucoup à la tradition européenne médicale. Les Européens ont donc trouvé une acceptation croissante de cet ancien système médical. Avec le bien-être et l'équilibre comme un moyen de guérison, maintien de la santé et la prévention des maladies. I'm working as a general doctor in the countryside, as a family doctor, and uh, I think that there are many illnesses where the normal medicine has no, no solution, so uh, I'm just working for the last few years together with my husband, uh, and if there are some cases where we don't find any solutions, I just ask him to, to help us with Ayurveda. The development uh, of Ayurveda in Europe is, I think, really something which will be a type of pioneer work now, because it's not here at the moment. Wellness Ayurveda is here, but uh, medical Ayurveda, uh, only a few doctors do. Um, as you've been to the Charité in Berlin, uh, Castle Clinic, in Germany there's more development. I'm one of the few doctors in Austria who are doing really with the medical tradition. And I think that's also an interesting point of view, to develop Ayurveda, be on the first front and change things to something better. Ayurveda continue de croître rapidement comme l'un des systèmes les plus importants de médecine esprit corp et la guérison naturelle. Comme la nécessité pour la thérapie naturelle, la prévention des maladies et une approche plus spirituelle de la vie devient encore plus important en cette ère écologique. C'est le mindset that is expected of a vaidya is not of as a profession but as a service that to the extent that one should be able to treat a patient as his own son his own child If your karmas, if your uh, work that you are doing is conducive for these two, stress and prayers, you are a good human being. That is the purpose of life.
सौंत ओतम पातो वार सौंत ओतम पातो वीवर सौंत ओतम पातो सावार सौंत ओतम पातो ओगमोंते Thank you.